Today we swapped out a new evaporator coil sitting on top of a furnace and we have a new condensing unit outside and we're about to start the system up and balance the charge in it which is what today's video is about. Now one of the things you need to know when you're balancing a charge is whether or not you have a TXV on the system itself. Basically what a TXV does is it regulates the liquid refrigerant coming in on this smaller line here. This is your high pressure side. Refrigerant comes in as a liquid into the evaporator coil. It turns into a vapor. The heat from the home goes through the evaporator and the vapor refrigerant absorbs that heat. Comes back out, goes back out to the condensing unit, but you see a bulb here. This bulb has refrigerant in it all by itself. And there's a little tube that goes down into a coil and back into the thermal expansion valve. So basically as this works is the, as the refrigerant absorbs heat from inside the house, it will expand the refrigerant inside this bulb because it heats up. And that expansion creates pressure that opens and closes this valve. So it regulates the refrigerant. Because of that, we have to charge off of our <clears throat> temperature and pressure settings off of our liquid line, which is our subcooling outside. I'm going to go ahead and insulate all this and then we'll get started. Before we go outside, I just wanted to show you guys that I have a temperature probe here located in the ductwork above the coil. And I have another one down here below by the return. So basically what I'm doing is I'm getting two temperature readings. I'm getting the temperature readings of the air coming in from the house, going into the unit. As it goes through the unit, cools down and then getting another temperature of the air exiting. And this is gonna give me a temperature difference of the air on both sides of this coil. And that's part of our charging process. We have the system on the vacuum, the service ports are still closed. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have Juan go ahead and open up the service ports. She's gonna start on the suction side there. She's gonna open that first. And these units, they come pre-charged with refrigerant, but because of the different lengths of line sets, we have to balance these charges because they're not always spot on. So he's going to open up that suction side first, and he's going to open up the liquid side. All right, so now our server ports are wide open. We're putting our disconnect into the on position. I got the breakers in the panel inside the house back in the on position, and the thermostat is already calling for cooling one. So all I need to do is flip on the burner switch on the furnace. And as soon as that switch comes on, this unit should start right up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it about 10 minutes or so just to run and equalize. We have a TXV on this system, so we have to go by our subcooling, which is going to be on this small liquid line here. So I'm gonna hook up a temperature probe to that line. When you're looking at the gauges here, you see on the suction side, there is a pressure and a temperature correlation. So we're running 410, that's the pink area here. So you want it to be above 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything below that will freeze water. So when you, have, when you have hot air going over a cold coil inside and the temperature of the refrigerant is less than 32 degrees, it's gonna start freezing that condensation that builds up on the coil. We want that temperature to be up higher over 32. We wanna charge off the high side subcooling. So our pressure gauge here is reading just a hair over 200. We have about 70 degrees on there. Now I wanna compare that temperature to the temperature of the probe that I'm reading over here. And what we're looking for is a ballpark of 10 degrees subcooling. Now you can see here what I'm reading on the app is uh, just under 72 degrees and that's on this probe here. And I'm reading about the same here. I'm reading about 72 degrees on the gauge. So what I want to do is I want to add refrigerant until this temperature on the probe and this temperature on the gauge are reading about a 10 degree difference. Now there are charts and temperature charts and all that stuff that you can kind of go through to get exactly what your subcooling reading should be. When you're charging 410 into a system, you have to add it as a liquid because 410 is actually a blend of two different refrigerants. And if you let it vaporize, those two refrigerants are gonna start separating and you're not gonna get the proper blend in the unit. So we have our bottle open here. We have our hose hooked up to our manifold. You follow the yellow hose. And this is where we're gonna add our refrigerant. And once we got that all open, 
you want to go ahead and you want to bleed some of the air out of the line because you don't want to put air into the system. We just performed a whole vacuum to get all that air out. So I'm just going to crack this, blow some of that refrigerant out, and then we're going to go ahead and flip this bottle upside down. So what you're doing when you flip the bottle upside down is whatever vapor that's in this bottle is actually going to be towards the top here. And we're adding refrigerant from the bottom, so we know it's going to be going in as a liquid. So now we're ready to add refrigerant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my suction side here. This is the, this blue hose here is hooking up to the suction side, which is the larger line on my refrigerant because that is a lower pressure. So when I open up the manifold to let refrigerant in, it's going to suck in on this line. When you add liquid refrigerant, into a system on the suction side, you got to be very slow and methodical about it because this suction line is going straight into the compressor and compressors do not compress liquids. So you want to add it just a little bit at a time so that it vaporizes in that drop in pressure before it hits the compressor so that you're not slugging the compressor as they say. So I'm going to crack it open. You'll see pressure rises as I'm adding refrigerant and as I close it off, it drops back down and you're going to slowly see this needle start to rise. So I'm just going to keep doing that until I have a temperature difference of 10 degrees between this and my probe. You're going to see these temperatures and pressures kind of bounce around when you do that. So you want to wait a couple minutes for it to stabilize again before you add any more. All right, so that's holding at around 73. And what I got over here, 73, 74. So I've still got plenty to go. And I'll let that settle in. Another part of this, you want to check your temperature difference inside. That's your delta T. So as you can see here, I've got 15.7, 15.8. So your ballpark, when you're, when you're at that right charge, when you're about 10 degrees subcooling, you should see it between 18 and 23 degrees Fahrenheit on that temperature difference between the two probes on the air inside. So right now I'm at 15.8. My subcooling is about uh, three or four, so we're just going to keep going. All right, so right now I'm reading about 78 degrees on my gauge. I'm reading about 73 degrees on my my probe over here. So I have about five degrees subcooling, so I'm about halfway there. I'm going to keep going. You see the pressure now is up to about 80. Look at my temperature down here, my probe, about 71 and it's dropping. So if that thing settles in right around 70, I'm right there at that 10 degrees. So I'll let this run for a couple minutes, see where it settles out. All right, so I got about 10 and a half degrees or so of subcooling uh, between my temperature on my gauge and the temperature on my probe on the liquid line. I got about 19 degrees delta T. That's the temperature difference inside between both sides of the evaporator coil there. And I'm ready to disconnect my hoses and call it a day. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to leave this suction side open. All right, I'm going to close all the other valves, make sure they're closed. I'm going to go ahead and flip this tank back over. I'm going to close it up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to suck all the refrigerant out of my hoses and out of my manifold. So I'm going to do that by using the suction on the unit itself. So I'm going to close off my high side, all right, because I want to suck all the refrigerant that's still in this hose, and I'm going to leave the low side open. So by doing this, everything that's in my manifold is going to get sucked through that hose into the line. So that's closed, that's open, and now I'm going to leave my suction on my manifold open. I'm going to open up the hose where I was adding the refrigerant. I'm going to pull all the refrigerant that's in that hose. And I'm also going to open up my high side. All right? And you can see how the pressure really drops down. That's the unit itself sucking all the refrigerant out of my hoses. So once that drops down all the way, it's going to equalize with the pressure. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close my manifold handles back up, all of them. I still got this valve closed. I'm going to go ahead and close my other valve. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect. And that's it. We're done.